Hey guys, welcome to Through the Bible Verse by Verse, a plain and simple study of the entire Bible, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. Currently we are in the book of Leviticus, the God's manual, operating manual for the priests. This is um, <clears throat> the, the book specifically for the priests, how they were to administer uh, the atonement, the priestly ministry, uh, all of the service of the tabernacle, the temple, the worship. Okay. Um, again, we're skimming through most of this, as I said before, because one, um, it's not for us. And even if we were under the Old Testament law, um, this book would be mostly to the, um, you know, again, f only for the priest. You know, in other words, we, we're reading this now just as a collection of, of the book. It, it, but we wouldn't have, a probably during the uh, Old Testament, we wouldn't have access to it. And, and again, as I said, it wouldn't be for us anyway. This is solely for the priest. So um, Aaron and his sons, and then um, that that is primarily who it's for. Uh, they and then the Levites in general. All right. So in chapter eleven, he says, um, "The Lord spoke to Aaron and Moses. I mean, the the, the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron. Tell the Israelites." You may eat all these kinds of land animals. Now, this chapter is quite lengthy. I'm going to read all of it. But let us keep this in mind in, in, about this chapter, about the dietary, what you can eat, what you can't eat. Now, this was limited only to the Israelites. So um, it wasn't, it, it really wasn't even a format for God's dietary laws. You cannot compile a health plan from this. In other words, this was God's unique dietary plan for Israel. That's it. Okay? That is it. Okay? He says, um, you may eat all these kinds of animals. Verse 3. You may eat any animal with divided hooves and that chews the cud. Among the ones that chew the cud, you have or divided hooves. Uh, you are not to eat these. Camel, though it chews the cud, does not have divided hooves. It is unclean for you. Uh, the horax, though it chews the cud, it does not have hooves. It is unclean for you. The hare, or rabbit we would call, though it chews the cud, it does not have hooves. It is unclean for you. The pig, now it's kind of interesting because the pig, um, probably out of all of the animals, get the worst name. But notice, there was a lot of these animals that Israel could not eat. Though it divides the hood, it does not choose to cut. It is unclean for you. Do not eat any of their meat or touch their carcasses. They are unclean for you. This is what you may eat from all that is in the water. You may eat everything in the water that has fins or scales, whether it is in the sea or streams. But these are to be detestable to you. Everything in the sea or the stream that does not have fins or scales among among all the swarming things and all the other living creatures in the water. They are to remain detestable to you. You must not eat any of their meat. You must not detest their carcasses. Everything in the water that does not have fins and scales will be detestable to you. You are not to detest you are to detest these birds. You must uh, they must not be eaten because they are detestable. The eagle, uh, the bearded vulture, the black vulture, the kite, the kind of falcon, every kind of raven, the ostrich, the uh, short-eared owl, the gull, any kind of hawk, a little owl, uh, the comrade, the long-eared owl, the white owl, the desert owl, uh, the, um, the or prey, the stork, uh, any kind of heron, the hope Hopu, the Hopu, and the bat, some of these I don't even know, uh, all winged 
in insects that walk on all four are to be detestable to you, but you may eat these kinds of all kinds of green insects that walk on all four. Those that have jointed legs above their feet for hopping on the ground, you may eat the, you may eat these, any kind of locust, KDD, cricket, and grasshopper, okay. Uh, <laughs> All other wing in insects that have four feet are to be detachable to you. So again, uh, we sometimes think about this. I don't even know. Most of the times, they don't even eat locusts, right? Grasshoppers, <coughs> uh, the katydid, crickets. But anyway, a lot of people in other parts of the world do. Verse 24. Uh, these will make you unclean. Whoever touches their carcass will be unclean until evening. And whoever carries any of the carcass must be must wash his clothes and will be unclean until the evening. All animals that have hooves but do not have divided hoofs and do not chew the cud are unclean for you. Whoever touches them bec becomes unclean. And all the four-footed animals that walk on their paws are unclean for you. Whoever touches their carcass will be unclean until evening. Anyone who carries <clears throat> their carcass must wash their clothes and will be unclean until evening. They are unclean for you. These creatures that swarm on the ground are unclean to you. The weasel, the mouse, uh, any kind of lizard, the gecko, the monitor lizard, common lizard, the skink, um, and the charlemagne, these are unclean uh, for you among all the swarming creatures. Whoever touches them when they are dead will be unclean until the evening. When any one of them dies or falls on anything, it becomes unclean. Any item of wood, clothing, leather, sackcloth, or any implement used for work, it will be rinsed with water and will remain unclean. I mean, it will remain unclean until evening. Then it will be clean. <clears throat> then it will be. Then it will be clean. If any of them falls into a clay pot. Anything in it will become unclean. You must break it. Now, I, I remember one time I was we, we were down in Texas, and it was I don't know what the heck happened down there, but it was just raining crickets and all. It, it, it reminded us of that. The point is, it was just falling down on the plate. Now, if we were under Israel at the time, that would have meant we would have got up and said, "We can't eat of this because it's unclean." Okay. Uh, verse 34. Um, any edible food coming into contact with that unclean water will become unclean, and any drinkable liquid in any container will become unclean. Any Anything one of the carcass falls on will become unclean. If it is in the oven or stove, it must be smashed. It will be unclean and will remain unclean for you. The spring or cistern containing water will remain unclean, will remain clean, but someone who touches a carcass and it will become unclean. If one of their carcasses fall on any seed that is sown, it is clean. But if any water has been put in the seed and one of the carcasses falls on you, it is unclean. Uh, if one of the animals that you use for food dies and anyone touches its carcass will be unclean until evening. Anyone who eats some of would be of the carcass must be washed, must wash his clothes and will be unclean until evening. Anyone who carries it, uh, the carcass, must wash his clothes and it will be unclean until evening. All the creatures that swarm on the earth are detestable. They must be, they, they must not be eaten. Do not eat any of the creatures that swarm on the earth. Anything that moves on its belly or walks on all fours on its feet for the other testable. Do not uh, become contaminated by any creature that swarm. Do not become unclean or defiled by them for I am Yahweh your God so you must consecrate yourself and be holy because I am holy. You must not defile yourself by swarming creatures that crawl on the ground for I am Yahweh who brought you up from the land of Egypt to be your God, so must you be holy, for I am holy. This is the law concerning animals, birds, all living creatures that move in the waters, and all creatures that swarm on the ground, in order to distinguish themselves 
in order to distinguish between unclean and clean, between the animal that may be eaten and those that may not be eaten. Uh, long chapter. I'm going to go to chapter uh, uh, 12. And um, this one is not as long, but, oh, anyway, chapter 12, verse 1. Now, let me say one thing, again, let me reiterate that the dietary laws, right, they were for Israel only. In other words, that list, <clears throat> God was not making the statement that those animals could not be eaten for anyone, okay? Um, it's just for Israel, okay? Only Israel. All right, chapter 12, verse 1. The Lord spoke to Moses, tell the Israelites, when a woman becomes pregnant and gives birth to a male child, she will be unclean for seven days as she is doing the days of her menstrual impurity. The flesh of his foreskin must be circumcised on the eighth day. Um, this is circumcision, and thank God. Um, and again, the circumcision... For the male child, cutting the, f the foreskin of the male penis, <clears throat> was for Israel only. Okay? Now, many people practice, many Christians practice circumcision because of religious reason. There is no religious reason. There is absolutely no religious reasons for um, <clears throat> a person to be circumcised. God does. God only limit commanded the, the the covenant between Abraham for the circumcision. Now, here's my point: whether you get circumcised or not, you could get into a whole debate whether medically or whatever that is good or not good. My point is, it is not for anyone who is not Israel. That's it. If you're not a descendant of Abraham circumcision doesn't matter whether you do or you don't it doesn't matter uh, verse 4 she will continue in purification from her bleeding for 33 days she must not touch any holy thing or go into the sanctuary until completely completing her days of purifications but if she gives birth to a female child when she she will be unclean for two weeks as she is doing her menstrual impurity she will continue for purification from her bleeding for 66 days. Now, let me say, <laughs> let me say something about this. Sorry, gals. Um, you see a clear difference between male and female. Remember I said when we started our journey, there are going to be things that say, you know, you're going to be like, what the freak, right? This is one of them. I don't know why. We're not given the reason why women were treated different in other words <clears throat> when a male seven seven days right female two 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 weeks it's just the way it is all right okay so let's see here all right Verse 6, when her day the purification is complete, whether for the son or daughter, she is not to bring, she is to bring to the priest at the entrance of the tent of the meeting, a year old male lamb for the burnt offering, and a young <coughs> pigeon, a, tur a turtle dove, for the sin offering, and he will present it before, he will present them before the Lord and make atonement on their behalf. And she will be unclean from her, and she will be clean from the discharge of of her blood this is the lawful woman giving birth whether a male or female but if she doesn't have sufficient means for a sheep she may take two turtle doves or two young pigeons one for the burnt offering and the other for the sin offering and the priest will make an atonement on her behalf and she will be clean okay so that is the law of the purification for women all right. Chapter 13. Um, now, this chapter here uh, is, <clears throat> let me prep for this. Um, 
because this actually is a few chapters and I think I'm going to stop here and not get into that chapter because <clears throat> it's going to get into we, we would call it uh, leprosy and um, I, I will say this since I got a little time here left what is interesting to me I'm going to take a little time here to kind of <clears throat> go off track a little bit what is amazing with some Christians today that when we talk about the vaccine now I'm not making a pitch either way for the vaccine what what I'm saying is that there are people who make the pitch for the back vaccine who say they should not take the vaccine and they're, they're, the information that they're getting to me, this doesn't make sense. Um, the mandates in terms of the infectious virus that we're dealing with, that we've been dealing with for the last two years, COVID-19, and how people have kind of just lost their minds. Here is the thing here. We're going to study a detailed chapter of how God deals with an infectious outbreak. Now, in this case, it was leprosy. And how God is dealing with this infectious outbreak <clears throat> to keep the spread of the, in this case, leprosy. During this time, leprosy was, um, it was, it, we have a cure for it today, but it, it, it spread rapidly. It would get on your clothes. It, it, it was a dreaded disease. Okay. And the way they handled it is one, they isolated people. In other words, the whole thing was, it was to stop the spread. That's it. Leprosy didn't necessarily kill a person, but it was a dreadful disease. It would dry out your... Let's say, for example, if you got um, rep, uh, 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 leprosy on your hand, uh, you could, it could dry it out so much that your hand would fall off. It, 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 that's why it was called a skin disease. There was no cure at the time. Like I say, we have one today. So again, the, the, the way that God commanded, God commanded the Israelites was to, again, um, separate the person okay take measures to stop the spread and again I just want to say um, uh, what the heck is going on here hmm all right I don't know I'm sorry my thing froze up here y'all so I don't know what happened right there but anyway but the idea was that God did a lot to stop the spread of the disease. And that's the most interesting thing. So, um, anyway, that's my two cents. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> to get too far into that. All right. We're going to pick this up in chapter 18, though, because we will deal with this the leprosy. And it's quite lengthy. There's a couple of chapters in which he would deal with it. All right, guys. I'll see you. Um next time. All right.